No, actually, we'll start with the Glendale Successor Agency. You know, we have a roll call for the Successor Agency. Board members, Friedman? Here. Manukian? Njarian? Here. Her. Here. Chair Quintero? Here. May we have your report? The agenda for the October 23rd, 2012 special meeting of the Successor Agency was posted on Thursday, October 18th, 2012 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. There's one item before this body this afternoon. Uh, one is Director of Community Development regarding Alex Regional Theater quarterly report and final audit a year-end financial statement from Glendale Arts for the period of April 1 to June 30th, 2012. At 1A is a motion to note and file a report. Mr. Ochoa. Yes, sir. We have the customary report. It's that time of the quarter and year, and so Elena Bolbolian from our CDD department <coughs> will give you the particulars on the performance of the theater. Good afternoon, agency members. <coughs> as Mr. Ochoa indicated, this, uh, this report is required as part of the management agreement between Glendale Arts uh, and the agency. And what we typically do is combine the fourth quarter report with the annual audit. Overall, uh, Glendale Arts experienced a strong fourth quarter with revenues being up 16%. They reduced expenses by nearly $4,000, and the theater was booked 51 days. This contributed to them ending the year on a more positive note. Uh, Glendale Arts did use, some of, did, did use up some of their own established reserves, but are quickly uh, re re replenishing them. As far as the annual audit goes, this is the third year that the firm of Larson and Rosenberg has conducted uh, an audit of Glendale Arts' accounting records and financial policies. And for the third year, again, they have not uh, found any material weaknesses or deficiencies. Uh, on, a, on a positive note, the, since preparation of the staff report, the State Department of Finance did issue a determination letter and they have approved the capital improvement projects as we listed them on our recognized obligation payment schedule. And so staff will be quickly moving forward with implementing uh, the capital improvement uh, projects since we've uh, gotten the go ahead from the State Department of Finance. And I just want to end by saying overall, given the last um, almost two years of uncertainty with the uncertainty being, um, you know, going back to when the governor announced his plans to, to eliminate redevelopment back in January of 2011. The Glendale Arts Board has been upbeat, and in fact they've uh, added two new board members as recently as last month with diverse backgrounds in um, dance and engineering. And so the board is committed to the Alex Theater and to move forward given, you know, all the uh, uncertainties. And uh, Alyssa Glickman is here if there are any specific questions, but overall this was a positive report for um, Glendale Arts and the Alex Theater. Any questions or comments? Mr. Nigerian. Um, there was a discussion about the, um, so for three months we were closed for the remodeling, so that set you back, uh, obviously in the revenue department. Um, but there was a discussion on the uh, uh, the results of the Glendale Pops. Was that a drain? I mean, was that a negative? That was it an ultimate negative, or what was the? I'll answer briefly, and Alyssa story. can certainly add. But essentially, the the reserves were set up as part of the management agreement, specifically for that reason, and so that if they do take on a programming event, if there are any losses incurred, Glendale Arts basically pays itself back out of those reserves, as opposed to coming back to the agency to seek to seek funding. And so the reserves were established for that reason, and. Um, you know, part of their facility fees go directly into um, replenishing those reserves. Okay. So is the Glendale Pops event something that, was that just an aberration that it lost money or why don't we have? Yeah, I'll let Alyssa answer that. Members of the agency, I'm Elisa Glickman. I'm the CEO of Glendale Arts, and I'm also the executive producer of the Pops Orchestra. So I could probably speak a little bit um, to your question. Um, the Pops was launched last year, and as with any new endeavor, 
they're expensive to get going. We also did two free concerts at the Americana at Brand to sort of get the pops up and running and introduce the organization to the public. We raised about $120,000 in sponsorship revenue to cover some of the expenses in addition to ticket sales. But obviously, with any new endeavor, you have additional expenses associated to it. On the Glendale art side specifically, the pops did lose some actual money. On the Alex Theater side, because we pay ourselves rent, we reimburse ourselves for labor, ticket and box office fees. It was actually a profitable endeavor for the Alex Theater. Um, why we had to draw from the reserve account is because after two free concerts, which total about $60,000, and then four other performances at the Alex Theater, as I said, we did need to cover some losses. Um, as you'll note, in the report, um, staff did indicate that after we paid back our mandated reserve account, which we did uh, this past week, um, we are now working on a plan, we actually have a plan in place rather, to repay some of the programming dollars that we borrowed in order to cover some of the expenses from the POPs from last season. Okay. So uh, I hope that clarifies that yeah, a little bit. The, um, was that the Dodges, was that Nelson Dodges? Uh, originally, when it was the Glendale Renaissance Orchestra, which was the organization that was established by a group of community people that Glendale Arts provided technical support to, um, that was a joint effort between that body, Glendale Arts, and the um, New West Symphony, which Nelson Dodge at that time was the executive director. Uh, we took over the what was then the Glendale Renaissance Orchestra, now the Glendale Pops Orchestra. Last year was our first official season as that entity, and then we just had our first performance on October 13th of, the, of our second season. Okay, so um, in years past, the redevelopment agency would be uh, contributing to the theater by the tune of how much? Well, the way it works is we, have, we get a $415,000 management fee. That management fee is not earmarked for any sort of programming. So any sort of programming that Glendale Arts produces or any sort of programming that we partner with or resident companies that we work with, we help to offset their rent um, on our Glendale Arts side. Um, again, because they're, they're, they're managed as one entity, but they are essentially two distinct operations, Glendale Arts can show a loss, whereas the Alex Theater can show a profit. And I think the Glendale Pops Orchestra is a good example of that, where we produce programming or we partner with someone to produce programming, and then we then put money back into the theater. Um, but none of that $415,000 can be used for anything other than operations, staffing, or maintenance. So going back far before my time, none of those dollars were used for programming. Okay. So looking forward in our upcoming budget, is that a, a budget item that we're going to be able to maintain? Uh, the 415000 uh, Contractually, this body is obligated for that 415 through 2015. Now, the Glendale Arts Board is working very diligently, because we always knew that the agency was going to sunset in 2015 anyway. And we were putting plans in place, what we've been calling our self-sustainability plan. The reality is, is that, as Elena mentioned, um, with the elimination of redevelopment, it sort of diverted some of our attention to self-sustainability and we're now back on track using the dollars that have been allocated for um, the capital improvement and other projects as sort of leverage um, to convince other donors and investors that the Alex Theater and Glendale Arts are a good investment so that we do get to that 2015 deadline um, with self-sustainability self sort of um, in the front of our, of, of our sites. So the answer is, our hope is, we anticipate not having to rely on any sort of dollars coming from this body beyond that 2015 date, um, and we're working towards that as one of our primary goals. So just so I'm clear, um, when we say this body, it was formerly with the redevelopment agency. Correct. So this body is now the successor agency, or are we superseded by the oversight board? Is it an enforceable I mean, obligation? I, no, that's a good this question. Is, this that is, is a good question. That crazy I ask that question all the time. Yeah. Um, so, Mr. Chair, members of the successor agency, it, it, it's an interesting question. We've gone through some uh, transitions. So the, the, the successor agency is the entity with which the um, 
with which Glendale Arts has a contract, both a management agreement and a lease agreement for the real property. It is an enforceable obligation. It's listed on our recognized obligation payment schedule on a going forward basis. What is interesting is what will dovetail in the future, and that is moving forward we'll be required to complete our due diligence review process for non-housing assets. That's coming up this fall, and that will lead to the agency being able to hopefully obtain its finding of completion designation from the Department of Finance, which will then allow the agency to formulate what's called a long-range property management plan for those properties that are owned still by the successor agency. What we're visioning within that, and we're in the process of putting our heads together now with what that's going to look like, that we'll have government use assets and government use properties that are defined by the code and other properties that aren't government use. This is something that sort of waffles in between that distinction in the code. And so the hope is that we will create a plan that will dovetail with a plan that we already have to wrap up our agreements by 2015, and that Glendale Arts and the Alex Theater will become self-sustaining at that point. So there is some work yet to occur with regard to that and some unknowns based on the processes that we have yet to complete as required by AB 1484. But we're hoping that we can match that with the path that Glendale Arts is already on towards self-sufficiency and that the DOF will therefore not require us to expeditiously sell that property at maximal value. In fact, that particular provision of AB 1484 is suspended at this point in time, pending the completion of finding of completion and pending the approval of this long-range property management plan. So those are some of the things that we're looking forward to that we think this may fit within. So if they agree, if the Department of Finance agrees with our property management plan, they will, the ultimate owner, though, the ownership of the Alex is still out of our hands, correct? It's theirs, but they're going to let it continue operating, continue to be operated in the current manner? It will still be owned by the Glendale successor agency, but where we may end up with that, and that's why I said there's this distinction between government use properties and non-government use properties, is that we may be able to seek some clarification there to allow this to be conveyed to the city. Well, that would be nice. That's what the ultimate goal is. One of the things that Jillian talked about is timing. We want to make sure that we time the projects with the, time the projects just right and then ask for it to be conveyed to the city so that we can still follow through with our plan to have tax increment fund these projects and then not make them an obligation of the city. Okay. I'm, you know, I feel sorry for everyone that's working so hard with these issues. I mean, it's hard enough running a theater and a community asset, but with the uncertainty that the state throws in also makes it very difficult. So I feel for your. That's a very astute commentary, and I appreciate that. And I have to let you know, and Elena did point out that our staff and our board is frustrated, but they're enthusiastic. I mean, we really see this as an opportunity, and I think our fourth quarter numbers really reflect the hard work and what you'll see in our first quarterly report in terms of the fact that we did turn a profit for the first time in our first quarter in about two or three years. So I think that you will really see our staffs and our board sort of rededication and recommitment to making sure that we hit that 2015 mark with that financial sustainability that we had all been trying to get to for so long. So I think that while it is frustrating and it is a huge challenge for all of us, as far as arts organizations go, we fared far better than many other arts organizations in L.A. County, and I really attribute that to the dedication and the hard work of the staff of the organization. So thank you. Thank you. That's a comment I was going to make, that in fact you have done quite well compared to other organizations, not only in L.A. County but across the state and probably the country. Okay. Did we need a motion to note or file? Proceed and file. It's a note and file. Move 1A. Roll call. Board members Friedman? Yes. Nukian? Najarian? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Yes. 
Next. Will we adjourn? Second. The successor agency is adjourned.